Welcome to Chapel Happy Hill. Easter. So excited and so um, happy to see every one of your faces here. Um, we're going to go ahead and start up worship service, but I do want to introduce those who make this service um, work uh, as well. So up here with me, I have Mr. Kerry Turner, uh, myself, Mallory Melchor, uh, Tracy Simon, and then Luis Melchor. Um, in the back, we also have our technology team, uh, which is Pat Randine, um, and if, if Brian is also there too. Um, thank you for helping to make sure that it goes smoothly. Um, we also do have some special singers that you'll see as well, which is uh, uh, Alex Hanna and Hunter Ogle will be joining us for our offering this morning. Um, and everybody who helped to uh, make this sanctuary such a beautiful place, I know there's lots of names, um, but it looks absolutely gorgeous. So we'll go ahead and start up worship service. Our call to worship and scripture reading is from John chapter 20, verses 1 through 18, and Psalm 118. Now, on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb early, while it was still dark, and saw that the stone had been taken away from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, they have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. So Peter went out with the other disciple, and they were going toward the tomb. Both of them were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. And stooping to look in, he saw the linen cloths lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon and Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen cloth lying there and the face cloth, which had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen cloths, but folded up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who had reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture, that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to their homes. Give thanks to the Lord, for God is good. God's steadfast love endures forever. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb, and as she wept, she stooped to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white, 
sitting where the body of Jesus had lain, one at the head and one at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. Having said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Open the gates of righteousness. We will enter and give thanks to God. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you seeking? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not cling to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord, and that he has said these things to her. This is the gate of the Lord, through which righteousness is. I will give you thanks, for you answered me. You have become my salvation. The stone of builders rejected is a cornerstone. The Lord has done this, and it is marvelous in our eyes. This, this is, is the day the Lord has made. Let, Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Good. Okay, perfect. Good morning, everyone. Is there any other children that would like to come forward? Or big kids? <laughs> All right. We got a couple more coming. Hello, hello. All right. How is everyone doing this morning? So. There's a ton of things that remind us of Easter, right? So what are those things that we think of when we think of Easter? Marcelo? Candy. Candy. Jay? <laughs> the return of Jesus. Perfect. Aubrey, is that what you can say? <laughs> the cross. Marcelo, you got it? The eggs. Oh, you're stealing my thunder again. <laughs> so I have... When I think of Easter, I think of an Easter egg, right? So, have you guys been on an Easter hunt, Easter egg hunt? Yeah. <gasps> Don't open it yet. <gasps> okay, so, do you guys, have you ever wondered why we use eggs to represent Easter? It seems kind of weird, right? Why? Because of the Easter bunny, yes, but it's got a little bit more meaning than just the Easter bunny. It's pretty cool the Easter bunny brings them, though, right? And they have candy, maybe some money, lots of good stuff, right? Oh, my goodness, a Lamborghini? I don't think that would fit. <laughs> Jay, yeah. Chicks, yes, perfect. What were you going to say, Aubrey? Nature, yes. So, when a mother hen sits on her egg for a few weeks, a chick hatches, right? Yeah, chicken. So the eggs begin to crack open and a baby chick comes out. So an egg represents new life, right? So it reminds us that there's new life inside that can come out. And we celebrate Easter Sunday because that's the day that Jesus came out of the grave and he was alive. So just like the little chicks come out. So this isn't a real egg, obviously, but it's empty. So it represents when the, um, everyone saw the tomb and the stone was rolled away and Jesus wasn't in there, right? It was empty. An angel was there to tell them that Jesus isn't here. He's risen. A chicken, yes, they come out, don't they? Good job, Belly. So the grave is empty. Jesus isn't there. He's alive, and because he's alive, we too can have new life in him. So let's say a quick prayer together, and then we'll say amen, and then I have a little treat for everybody. 
Check, yes. <laughs> so, dear God, today we celebrate the empty grave. We thank you that Jesus is no longer there. He is risen, and because of that, we have new life in him. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And just a quick little announcement. There's not going to be any um, children's church today, but we'll start up again next week. I just love Amy's sermons. I just love it. Thank you so, so much. Love seeing all you beautiful kids here today. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Amen? Amen. This is God's day. This is the day that we wait on. Lent is over. So for anybody who's been like missing their chocolate and missing all of this stuff, it's over. But even better than that, he is risen. He is risen indeed. Amen. Amen. Say it with me. He is risen. He is risen. He is risen indeed. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Let's go to this God of ours in prayer today. It's this is a really, really important day to give lift our hearts, to lift anything that's on our mind, to pray for people that we know need, to pray for ourselves to ask God to be with us. We have several people that are ill that are in the hospitals today. We just, this is a time that we need your prayers, all right? So let's pray. Risen Christ, enter our worship, enter our hearts this day. As you live and as you move among us, remind us to proclaim and to live this life that you offer us. Inspire us, God. Come among us and lead us to become the children of your resurrection. We pray for all faithful people. We pray for all people who are baptized. We pray for all people whom God is calling today. We pray for every human soul that turns to God in longing and in love. Today and every day, O oh Lord, we ask you to pull us out of our graves and into your life. We pray for all the nations of the earth, for all those in authority, for all those under authority. Come from the four winds, O oh God, in your breath of life, and help us to live together in peace. We pray for our world, for the rain, the snow, the seed, the sprouts, for birthing room, for the last place of rest, and for every new creation. We lift up all those who are sick or suffering, for anyone who needs extra help just now. We pray especially for those who are named here today, aloud and in our hearts. And living Lord, renew them in your love. We look for our sustainer today among all the living. We pray today for all those who have died, for all those who mourn their death. We pray especially for those who are named here today. Eternal One, bring them home and gather them in. With joy and exultation, we give you thanks for the triumph of life over death. We offer special thanks for those joys, those sorrows, those challenges, those delights that are named here today, aloud and in our hearts. Lord, we are amazed at what has happened. The tomb stands empty. We look for our Creator among the living. Jesus Christ is alive and in our hearts today. Holy One, even before you call, we call you answer. While we were yet speaking, you hear. We offer up all these prayers in the name of the risen Christ, our Savior, our Redeemer, and our friend. And now we share together that prayer that Jesus left us all by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. 
and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Now the peace of Christ is with you. Let us wave gracious greetings to one another, and everybody be sure and turn around and wave to all of our friends and family members who are at home today. Please stand with us, church, as we sing My Redeemer Lives. together. What a wonderful day to celebrate our risen Savior. Let's go to this loving God of ours in prayer. Will you bow with me, please? Holy and righteous God, you're our Father. You're the one that loves us. You're the one who sent Jesus to save us. And you're the one who raised him from the dead. Lord, as we come on this day, we just... We could never thank you enough. We, we are your people, 
But it's because you love us and because you send your grace. We're so, so thankful. So, Lord, we thank you for all of our people here. And may the words of my lips, may all of our hearts be acceptable to you. You're our rock and you're our redeemer and we love you. In Jesus' precious name we ask it all. Amen. Amen. So I wanted to share this little devotion with you that I read this morning. It was from Bishop Will Willeman. He was teaching a religious course in a little small college. And he sent his proposals into the curriculum committee. And it was entitled, Jesus, the most interesting person in the world. How can you tell that he's a United Methodist pastor? The most interesting person, not the most interesting man in the world, right? Y'all remember all that? But anyway, they said, no, nah, absolutely not. You're not teaching that here because we know that what you're trying to do is proselytize. You're not. And so he said, well, okay. And so he rewrote it, presented it as a history class, and renamed it Jesus Through the Centuries, a study of Jesus Christ throughout all ages or something. Of course, they immediately thought it was great. So when they had their first class meeting, everybody came in and sat down, and the first thing he said was, "Uh, close the door, please. (laughs) How do you know that things are going to change, right? He says... Look, this is more than a history class. He said, I aspire for this to be very different than that. He says, I'm just going to be honest with you. If you want to study history, go study George Washington. Go study Ida B. Wells. Go look at Abraham Lincoln. But this is a class about Jesus the Christ, who was indeed a historical figure, but considerably more, considerably more. And Christian people are those who believe indeed they are people who have experienced Christ in their life, that Jesus is a living presence right here, right now, absolutely. And so I'll just tell you that the only reason for you to be here, to spend an entire semester thinking about him, is that there are those of us and you who think he isn't dead, that he isn't a figure from the past, but that he is present, he is real, and he is alive. And he says, you know, he said, it was so simple, so simple. Jesus and I won over several students who really thought that Jesus Christ didn't really apply to them. Amen? We got anybody here today that thinks that Jesus Christ doesn't really apply to them? (laughs) You're not going to show your hands in here, right? (laughs) Okay. Well, he is risen. He is risen indeed. Say with me, he is risen. He is risen indeed. This day is the victory day for all humankind, but it starts in utter darkness, you know? Like a lot of really wonderful things do, it starts in utter darkness. What we see is Mary go into the darkness, go to the tomb to pay her respects, and you know, when we read John's Gospel, and this is in the Gospel of John, Almost everything has a lot of meaning to it. It's got multiple meanings. You know, it's like there's what's really happening here, and then there's the symbolic meaning of all of it. And when he says that it was still dark, of course that means that the sky was dark, but it also is like a picture of her broken heart and who she is and how she feels. It tells us about her. And so her whole world, they're saying, is dark. Her heart's broken, right? Well, somebody has rolled away that stone that's securing him, 
His body is gone. Peter and John, the disciples, have come. They've gone. They've confirmed, yep, he's gone. He's gone. But she stays, and she cries. And then she sees two angels dressed up in white, and they're seated where his body was. And then they ask her probably the single most rhetorical, almost bordering on rude question of all time, why are you crying? Right? Why are you crying? Well, it's pretty simple. Jesus is gone. Jesus is gone. This one that she believed in, that she loved, he's gone. She weeps because she's in grief. Somebody that she loves has died. We understand that, don't we? You know? I met somebody here last week who told me just how much she missed her husband. She said, you know, he's been gone for three years, and I know he's with me. I can hear him talking to me still, but I miss him, you know? I miss him. I, I feel like I'm not going to be all right, really, because he was her treasure in life, you know? He, he was her husband. And I will admit to you that 11 years after my son's passing, I still go on Facebook <laughs> and put in notes to him and remind him that I love him and how much I miss him. You know, somehow we just kind of try to fill that emptiness, right? When someone passes, there's a thing that happens where we just need people to comfort us. You know, and people mean well, I think, you know. They try to comfort us by saying, oh, yeah, he's in heaven, it's okay, you know, you'll see him again someday and all that stuff. But really what we need when people comfort us is just to hug us and to offer. We know that, you know, we know where they are. But what we miss is that voice, right? We miss that voice. We miss that person seeing him or her and being with them. Well... This is the third day. It's the third day. She turns. She sees Jesus there, but she doesn't know that it's him. She thinks it's the gardener. And I, I have to tell you that every time I read this, I laugh to myself because I think to myself, man, that must have been the luscious grounds on the whole place if Jesus is the gardener there, right? But... All of a sudden, he calls her by his name, by her name, and she hears his voice. She hears him, and she knows that it's him. And all of a sudden, he's alive. He's up, and she runs as hard as she can go to the other disciples. She doesn't say, hey, Jesus is up from the dead. She says, hey, I saw the Lord. I saw him. I saw him. This one who we thought was dead is alive now. He's here. I saw him. I talked to him. Amazing, really, you know. I think most of us know all about death. I want us to remember this past year how many people among us have passed really in the last couple of years. It's just a lot, really, I think. Most of us know a lot about death. We do. We know that we all live and that we all will pass. Everybody we know and love will pass. That this is life, it ends at death. And there is a day that we will be up and with Jesus again. But this is life and eventually this is what happens. People we love are just gone. But into the journey that we're on steps our living God, okay? We don't recognize him just an awful lot of the time. They didn't recognize him when they saw him. They thought that the crucifixion of Jesus was the absolute end of the story between us and God. 
The crowd turned against him. The establishment was threatened by him. It was dark. It's over. But indeed, it is just the beginning. God made a way where we think there's no way. God always makes that way for us. God makes a way toward us. And God does this in a way that we could never do ourselves. He is risen. He is risen. And he is our Lord. You see, God has raised our crucified Savior from the dead. And even more powerful to me is that the very first thing that happens is he goes back to see his friends and just immediately picks up kind of where they all left off, right? Shows up. Most of them had abandoned him. They had all done these things that would make almost all of us really, really upset, but he returns. In his resurrected body to his disciples, he calls him by name. And just as he had called them to follow him at the very beginning, he's back. You see, this is our God's way of loving us. I know that there are probably several of us here, really, that have struggled to believe that things have happened. You know, just had a had some things in life that have happened. And I know that it's difficult sometimes to begin your Christian relationship with Jesus and to just know how to connect. I know this. Maybe there are people here who feel this great sense of loss. But the story of this empty tomb just tells us over and over and over again, have faith, you know, have faith, just trust, just trust. Jesus didn't just leave the tomb, he left the tomb to come to you. He left the tomb to speak to you, to each and every one of you, to call each and every one of you by your name and to offer himself to you. You know, for anybody who's going through a very difficult time in life, in the darkness, you know, take heart. This is what we see here. They're in the darkness, completely surrounded by terrible things, by death. Jesus comes. He's there. Maybe we just need to know that in those times when things are dark and difficult, that he is alive, that he's with us. That he's not just a memory. That he is a real person who has been raised from the dead. The world did its best to do its absolute worst to him. Absolutely. But God has acted. Jesus is alive. And he lives among us. It's just not all up to us. Our lives are not all up to us. God is here. God cares about us. And God is with us. You see, our God absolutely refuses to let death write the last chapter or to have the last word. God makes a way when we are just, we don't know how we would ever find the way or if there is a way. But he is here. He is present to you precisely in those moments. He is there with us in our joys. He is there with us in our conquerings and the great things that happen. But he is there with us when we are in pain. He is here in this church. Amen? He is here right now. He is present in the reading of all the scriptures. He is here in these words. He is here in how you're hearing it. 
He is present when we have communion in the bread and in the juice. He is present in your fellowship. We had great breakfast this morning. He was there. That's why those eggs were so good, right? I absolutely know this to be true because I was seeing Christ among you and in you and through you. Bodily present, undeniably here, God with us. So, what does it mean, really, to be a Christian? What does it mean? This guy's going to tell us, right? What does it mean to be a Christian? It means to believe, amen? Not only to just believe in Jesus, but to believe him. To believe him when he tells you who he is. To believe that he is with you. To believe that he lived. To believe that he died. To believe that he got up. He rose up to save you from sin and death. And then to hold him in your heart. To trust that he is with you. And to live your life every day being led by the Savior. This is what it means to be the Christian. Whether it's in the most beautiful of times or whether it's in the deepest darkness, a Christian is someone who can say to the world, I've seen the Savior. I know the Savior. I have given my life to the Savior. He is risen. He is risen indeed. He is with us in power and strength and love and grace. And I just want to tell you that this is a wonderful day to be a Christian. Amen? Amen. It's a wonderful day to become a Christian if you are not. It's a wonderful day to become a member of the family. And so, as we go to the offering, you're invited, okay? Let me pray. Would you open your heart, hands, palms up? We give you thanks, O oh God, for you are good. You have been our help and our hope. You call us to be help and hope for the world. You live among us. You call us to share life and love with all creation. Bless the gifts that we bring before you today, that they may be signs of your life, your hope, and your love. Bless our givers, O oh Lord, and bless our people as they come to love you today. In Jesus' precious name we pray, amen. Burdens and my fears at the cross they disappear. 
have set me free. Hallelujah, I'm free indeed. Hallelujah, my heart is alive. I once was dead, but
you for just a few minutes. I want to share a few announcements with you all today. If you have purchased an Easter lily in memory or in honor of a loved one, you can pick it up as soon as our worship service is over today. Um, we're getting ready to start our Wednesday nights uh, worship again, and we are calling that what, man? Faith Up Wednesday. Faith Up Wednesday. And so there are t-shirts for it. It's just going to be, it's, it's amazing. So already on Wednesday nights at 445, our children and youth from 1st to 12th grade are welcome to be here. Uh, we have homework, help, um, all kinds of games and things like that. And so Meredith, and let me see, where's our other youth person? And Helen, and anyway, they're waving at you. So if you're wanting to get your kid registered for this, it's a lot of fun. We hope that you'll come. Um, and let's see, are there any more announcements that we need to make today? Anybody? No? Okay, I've got to hear something. Let your will be done on earth as in heaven, right here in my heart. Father, let your kingdom come. Father, let your will be done on earth as in heaven, right here in my heart. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us, forgive us. As we forgive the ones who sin against us, forgive them, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Let your kingdom come, Father, let your kingdom come, Father, let your will be done, on earth as in heaven, right here in my heart. Father, let your kingdom come. Father, let your will be done. On earth as in heaven, right here in my heart. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us, forgive us. As we forgive the ones who sin against us. Forgive them and lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from the evil one. Let your kingdom come. It's yours. It's yours. All yours. All yours. The kingdom. The power. The glory are yours. It's yours. It's yours. All yours. All yours. Forever. The kingdom is yours, is yours, is yours, all yours, all yours. The kingdom, the power, the glory are yours, is yours, is yours, all yours, all yours, forever and ever. The kingdom is yours, Father, let your kingdom come. Father, let your will be done on earth as in heaven, right here in my heart. Father, let your kingdom come. Father, let your will be done on earth as in heaven, right here in my heart. On earth as in heaven, right here. close today, I just want to tell you what a wonderful thing it is to see all of you kids 
adult kids, uh, young kids, all of you, who have come here today to be with your parents and grandparents for Easter. It's just a wonderful thing. I've met Miss Mady's family back here, and I've seen a lot of people. It's just nice to have you back here at Chapel Hill. Amen? And also, I just want to say to these two young folks that were singing just now, the hymn that they were singing was Charles Wesley. You know, that, that hymn is over 300 years old. And, you know, on a day when Christ is risen, and we say it over and over and over again, I smiled to myself wondering just what old Charles was thinking as he watched everyone <laughs> watch these kids learning his words 300 years later. Amen. Amen. So thank you all so much for being with us today. It's been a blessing to have you. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. And so as we are sent today, as we leave this place, go, proclaim the risen Christ. Go, live as the risen children of God. Go, be Easter people, be Christ people, people who are filled with love, people who are filled with hope, and people who are filled with Christ's life. Go for all the world. Amen. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.